Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm with the BC Lung Association, and I have the distinct pleasure of sitting here with Dr. Eleanor Seton, who is the co-director of the Spatial Sciences Research Lab at the University of Victoria, right here in beautiful British Columbia. So, we're here to talk about air quality, obviously, as they relate to everyone's favorite travel, cruise ships. Maybe not everybody's favorite, depending on what you say here. Why don't we get right to it? What strategies have been used to reduce emissions from cruise ships in Victoria? Well, maybe we could broaden it right off sure, right yeah. off the start, right? It's not just cruise ships, it's not just Victoria, but I think what makes Victoria interesting is we have no other real big industrial sources of the kinds of emissions that come out of cruise ships. So by looking at Victoria and looking at days with cruise ships and days without cruise ships, mm -hmm. we can really get a really good signal of what kinds of emissions are coming out of the cruise ships. And um, in 2010, they adopted a new regulation worldwide that limits the amount of sulfur dioxide in the fuel that cruise ships okay. use. Yeah. So cruise ships and freighters and tankers uh, actually use some of the dirtiest fuel out there, wow. right? The sulfur content in the fuel they use is about 1.5 percent. Uh, it can be even higher when they're further away from, from shore. Um, compared to cars, trucks, even small marine boats where it's like 0 .00015%, okay. yeah. so literally thousands of times higher oh. sulfur content coming out of the cruise ship emissions. Wow, that's yeah. big. Yeah, it is. So obviously there's an impetus for why this all happened and why we're implementing these strategies. Um, so further to that, what was the actual Im the impetus for this yeah. and who was involved? Well, we'll just move to the next slide here. Um, there's an organization called the International Marine Organization. Mm -hmm. It's actually a UN agency, and they actually regulate emissions from marine vessels, right? So it's not uh, the province of BC. Okay. Uh, it's not the federal government of Canada. Um, it's actually this international organization. And they've been looking at emissions from shipping um, because of this big, dirty fuel uh, issue right. um, for a long time. So uh, they instituted something called the MARPOL Annex 6, and it allows um, countries to apply to put an um, emission control zone in around their coast. Interesting. And so the U.S., EPA, and Transport Canada um, worked together in 2009 to apply for one of these emission control areas. Wow. And so that's been the big driver for these big drops. But so it's by international consensus, really. Um, let's dive deeper into that. Sure. What, what sort of impact have we seen since the implementation of this? Well, before the implementation, um, the International Marine Organization and the US EPA worked together to estimate what the emissions might be if they didn't have the regulation. And you can see on this slide here that without creating this emissions control area, we can see PM 2.5, that's fine particulates, a um, lot of health impacts there. Um, then it's not a big emission, but it would you know, increase without regulation. Um, in the middle, you see the sulfur um, oxides, and most of that is actually SO2, sulfur dioxide. And you can see an, almost a doubling, right, wow. by 2020 without the regulation. And then again, big increases as well um, in nitrogen oxides. So without that um, regulation, they were expecting these kinds of big increases. So with the regulation, of course, um, inside this North American uh, emission control area. You can see that it's about 200 nautical miles off the coast, goes all the way up to Alaska, mm -hmm. covers both coasts and Hawaii as well. Um, that was implemented in March of 2010. Okay. Right? So as of that point, the amount of sulfur in marine fuels has been reduced slowly. So it started at 1.5%. Um, around 2012, it went down to 1%. And then in 2015, it went down to 0.1%. Wow. So these are really substantial regulatory reductions in that sulfur content. And the amount of SO2 that comes out of the cruise ships is directly proportional. So if you reduce the amount of sulfur in the fuel by 90%, you reduce the emissions of SO2 by 90%. It's just a straight line relationship there. So we are expecting to see some pretty big numbers coming out of our study in Victoria because yeah. we've just got the cruise ships right there. Those are very positive and very big numbers. So I'm going to ask yeah, they you are. the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to further reduce the, in, well, the air quality impacts? Let me show you what happened in, a, yeah. in what actually happened there. So um, this is showing you that since 2000, the number of cruise ships coming into Victoria has been increasing quite substantially. Mm -hmm. So around 2000, we would get around 40 cruise ships a year, um, bringing in you know 50,000 passengers. 
Um, this year in 2017, we'll have almost 250 individual ships bringing almost 600,000 people. So this is a huge increase over um, the last 20 years for sure. Um, so as we see these numbers of ships increasing and increasing, hopefully with this new ECA, we'll see that the SO2 is going down even so. And that is what we saw. So this graph is based on some data that was measured right in the neighborhood near the cruise ships. Um, the Port Authority and uh, the Ministry of Environment here in BC cost shared a monitor and it's been running in there since 2009. So you can see on average, um, we used to see levels around 10 to 12 micrograms per cubic meter of sulfur dioxide and that's gone down to less than one based on 10 minute averages, one hour averages and 24 hour, hour averages. So we did see that really huge drop and that's a really good news story for sure. And have we seen uh, the cruise ship companies and the vessels, have they all adopted uh, whatever the policies were? Did you see any resistance or were they oh, all? Oh, sure. There was some resistance, definitely, because there's a cost to burning cleaner fuel, Absolutely. right? And that cost is borne completely by the ships that mm -hmm. have to purchase the fuel. Um, the US EPA and Canada both did uh, estimates of the kinds of health benefits that would come versus mm -hmm. the costs. And certainly the health benefits have much higher value than that. In Canada, they were estimated around $900 million worth of health benefits. So avoiding wow. asthma, avoiding respiratory incidents, even extra deaths, right, yeah. that are being avoided by reducing this pollution so significantly. Yeah. Um, whereas the costs are, are quite a bit lower to the companies. Absolutely. So, yeah, there was definitely some opposition. The state of Alaska sued the, United, the US EPA okay. to try and stop it from bringing it in. No. Um, that didn't hold up well, thank goodness. It yeah, took good. about a year, but then the, the courts in the uh, US struck it down. I think there was a lot of international pressure, you know, other shipping companies saying everybody has to do it. We can't just do it in one place versus another because that's an unfair economic advantage. Absolutely. So there's a lot of pressure to make this regulation work and it really has. So yeah, that's great. Um, I think in general there are still issues, right? What happens mm -hmm. with the cruise ships in Victoria is they tend to come all together, right? Victoria is actually the busiest cruise ship port in Canada. Really? It's busier than it is here in Vancouver. We mm -hmm. get more ships and passengers wow. in Victoria than here. Yeah. Um, and if you know Victoria, you'll see that the cruise ship terminal is just right in a residential area. It's not yes. off in a sort of an industrial port area. It's just like right downtown practically. Right. Yeah. Um, but because Canada is the first port of call, a lot of the ships tend to come up. They come into port sometime in the afternoon, sometimes three at a time. Um, they do their customs, uh, take on supplies, do things like that, that get their paperwork, and then they leave by midnight. So they come and go in a fairly short period of right. time. And that concentrates the emissions right into Absolutely, those time yeah. periods and makes it sort of even more. So um, since this regulations come into effect and we see these great increases, there's still issues um, that the stakeholders are working on. So the community uh, group, the James Bay Neighborhood Association is working closely with the cruise ship industry and the Greater Victoria Harbor Authority that runs the port there to try and stagger arrivals, right? So, you know, it's not all happening at once and you don't get as, as much of a concentrated emission. And yeah. yeah, so still working on, on improving things, even though we have seen these great reductions in, in SO2. It's excellent that we're seeing such great progress because we want all those people to come see our beautiful province. Yeah. And at the same time, it looks like the, the regulations are indeed proving to be effective. Yeah. So that's very good. So that's all the time we have right now. I'm going to take this moment right now to thank Dr. Eleanor Sen for joining me on this. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.